Welcome to another video. We are going to take a look at Saturday's Premier League fixtures. I'm going to run through all of the stats, all of the data for some of these games. There are some interesting permutations and potential things that could happen and pressure being, being put on some teams. Um, of course, at the bottom there, just behind my nose now, is um, Arsenal, who have just completely bottled the league, haven't they? Let's be honest. Um, I see people trying to like protect them and say, oh, you know, they've had injuries and whatnot. They have had injuries, but they, they should have won the league. I mean, it was in their hands. They were eight points clear. Um, and the pressure of Man City chasing them, I think, got to them. Um, Liverpool at home to Aston Villa... Fifth against eighth, which is just a credit to Unai Emery there. Um, that is a chance for Liverpool to put pressure on Man United, even though they're playing at the same time. Man United are away at Bournemouth. That's the game we're going to start with, um, because I think this could be a tricky fixture for Manchester United. Now, if we look at Bournemouth's combined form, they don't draw many games, do they? That's the first thing that stands out to me. Two defeats in the last two games. Um, their away form has been better recently. They got those three wins in a row, which at this time of the season, if you look at the oppositions as well, they beat Leicester and they beat Southampton um, to basically ensure their Premier League survival. If we look at their overall form, as I say, not many draws, but they've, they've been winning games and um, Gary O'Neill, I think he's right up there um, in the mix for manager of the year for sure. Um, you know, if Pep Guardiola wins the treble, he'll probably get it. Um, but De Zebri, O'Neill, Emery potentially as well, Eddie Howe. Um, interesting that I've not even mentioned Arteta. I think many would put him up there, but it's you can't deny it that the, the, the drop off in form at the wrong time uh, for them. Saliba getting injured was massive, wasn't it? If we look at Man United's form, they recovered from those two defeats where they didn't score a goal. They came back to beat Wolves, and I must say, I watched that Wolves game, and they weren't really amazing. They didn't set you know the world alight with that performance. It was very slow. Um, when they got to the edge of the box, there wasn't really that creativity, that spark. I think they missed Martial. Uh, sorry, miss uh, Rashford. Martial um, played, but you know, didn't really do much. Um, Anthony seems to be in a good bit of form. Uh, Garnacho is likely to start, given that he came off the bench and uh, scored that second goal. Um, I think once he gets his decision making sorted, there was a few times in that Wolves game where he could have just fed somebody in, and he's like, you know, dilly dallying on the ball. Um, he's a good sub to bring on and obviously he's going to be full of confidence. I do think he starts this game and it could be quite an open game given the way that Bournemouth have been playing recently. If we do an AI prediction for this game, let's see what score we get. You can see that if I was to um, select Manchester United to win, I would get 2.05 points back on the predictions um, game on odd alerts. And um, if you want to see the rankings, we can do that quickly to see who's top of this game week. The previous game week, the winner was Rob again. Um, I sent him an Odd Alerts mug. He was also manager of um, the, the previous month. Um, so he won a mystery football shirt as well last month. So if you want to get involved in this, you can do that quite easily. Just create a, an Odd Alerts account, free or pro, um, and you can start adding predictions and, um, yeah, getting yourself on those leaderboard rankings. So onto the AI prediction, you can see that um, it gives a uh, probability uh, model rating of 27% for a Bournemouth victory. So we should expect a Man United victory with this generation, but you never know. Let's see what it does. It is a 2-1 victory to Manchester United. Um, it was the most common scoreline as well. 1-1, not too far behind in terms of common scorelines. So my own prediction for that is actually a draw. Um, I do think we could see a 1-1. Um, I don't think if Rashford's out, if Martial's still not playing well, if Sancho's still not really as effective as he could be, if Bruno Fernandes is sulking, which let's be honest, he probably is, then I think Man United could struggle. Um, I think if they don't get that goal early or they don't stamp their authority on this game straight away, then um, Bournemouth will grow into the game and um, last home game of the season, this is it, you know, for a lot of teams, Liverpool's last home game of the season, um, Firmino likely to play. Um, I do think this kind of stuff makes a difference, the, the psychology of the scenario the occasion you know it, it does play a part and you see some of the home teams playing Anfield Spurs they're doing a you know um, some sort of montage or that they're they're giving something to Harry Kane for being the all-time top scorer um, and there's some like a mural as well on the way to the ground it might be a farewell kind of celebration as well because Harry Kane that could be his last game but there's just these these home teams where you think Anfield's going to be rocking 
Um, Bournemouth's going to be rocking. Forest is going to be rocking. Um, and I I believe that the crowd is one of the biggest differentiators, to be honest. You know, teams go into places like Anfield and um, that was confirmed during COVID. You saw the away form. Um, the away teams were winning in the Premier League like never before, scoring goals like never before away from home because there was no fans. Um, simple as that, really. Fans come back, that that anomaly of a stat is uh, is no longer there. On to Liverpool against Aston Villa, and we'll start by looking at the last 10 fixtures, and we can see that it's almost identical. Both teams have won 70%, so 7 out of 10, um, which is pretty good. And um, in terms of points, Liverpool have one more point during that period, which is 23 compared to 22. I think I saw somewhere the other day um, that Aston Villa, since Emery took over, he, I think they're third in terms of total points um, tallied up during that time. He's done a really, really good job. And we can see the results. Um, first with Liverpool, I think this is going to be a fun, high-scoring game. Two teams playing with great confidence. Um, this is a game that suits someone like Ollie Watkins, I think, end-to-end, counter-attacking football. Um, Coutinho playing with Firmino on the pitch will be nice. Um, I think that'll be a decent occasion for, for both sets of fans, especially Liverpool fans saying goodbye to Firmino, who has been um, a super player and person at the club, scored some very big goals. Um, one thing that Jurgen Klopp will be very pleased with is the clean sheets, three clean sheets in a row now, and um, he's getting a lot out of certain players. Um, he, he can be proud of what Trent is doing in, in the middle for sure. So it's a sea of green for Liverpool. Let's check out Aston Villa. A couple of defeats um, in recent times, and we saw, didn't we, with the last 10, that they've won seven of the last 10. Um, also, a trend of clean sheets before those defeats, of course. Um, they beat Spurs, which they should have scored a lot more in that game. Um, Spurs really just need the season to end, I think. We'll take a look at that game next. Let's have a look at goals conceded. They're both towards the bottom of the table. Liverpool got a better defensive record by two goals um, than Aston Villa. So this Liverpool game, uh, my prediction would be that the fans just take Liverpool to that next level. Liverpool are ending the season in a fantastic place. Um, that's not to discount Aston Villa. They are going to give a very, very good account of themselves here. I think they'll score. I think it'll be a very open game. This It's one that will suit Ollie Watkins um, on the counter-attack. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be just a, a fun game to watch. I'm going to go 3-1 to Liverpool. Now we'll move on to Tottenham and Harry Kane's last game, potentially. Um, they are awarding him. They are celebrating him in some way. They're, they've announced that. Is it a, a goodbye event as well as a, a celebration of what he's done at Tottenham? Who knows? It is the final home game of the season, of course. But we can look at the last 10 um, and it's not good reading for Tottenham. They have scored in every game, which is something to note. Um, but they have conceded 2.3 goals per game across the last 10. 23 goals compared to Brentford's 12. If we look at the away form for Brentford, they've actually conceded just 9 goals in the last 10 away games. So 0.9 per game. But they have failed to score in half of those games. So if we turn this back to overall, one thing that does stand out is that average goals at the top there. 420 um, for Tottenham. So, yeah, clean sheet in just one of the last 10 games. BTTS has landed in 90%, so 9 out of 10. They're just not scoring goals at home, it seems. They've scored six goals in the first half across the last 10 home games, just nine in the second half. If I toggle this back to overall, you can see the jump up. So that would suggest that their away form is much better. They're scoring goals in the second half away from home. So I guess potentially, unfortunately, for them, um, this game is at home. We can look at their recent form. It is not good. People calling for Ryan Mason to get the job. Why? What here suggests he's ready for this job? What here is giving you confidence that he's the man to take the club forward? Nothing against him, but like you know, if this is a trial run, he's not inspired any kind of change. Um, it's it's sort of got worse. You know, look, they, they were sort of winning uh, one loss to Wolves. One loss away at Leicester um, and a couple of draws and a win, but then it's just falling apart again. I think Tottenham will struggle in this game. I think we might see a draw. Um, if we look at Brentford's away form quickly, it's not great. They are better at home. One defeat at home in a very long time. So 
That's three games this Saturday. As always, please let me know what you think will happen in these games. Can't wait to read your comments. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Uh, will Liverpool get in the top four? That's my question to you. Please answer in the comments. And if you like these videos, subscribe.